So we live as though we are in heaven, yet we are here. Because we are out of this world. We are in the world, but we are not of the world. This is God's plan. This is God's plan so that we are not ravaged by what is ravaging everybody. We are not distressed by what is distressing the community. We are not overtaken by the vices in the city. We are the ones in charge and in control. God has set us as the light of the world. We are a city that is set upon the hill that cannot be hidden. He said that our God is light, and in Him there is no darkness at all. The light is always desiring. Light is life. Wonderful Jesus, we give you praise. This morning we acknowledge you. And we consecrate this hour to you. We dedicate this moment to you for wonders. We believe you for the move of your spirit this morning. We trust you to touch every heart. We trust you to deliver everyone oppressed today. We believe you for the unseen miracles. We want you to do things that will affect eternity in somebody's life today. We believe you to move the mountains. We believe you to cause a shaking in the camp of the enemy. We trust you that at the end of this service, oh God, everyone will go home rejoicing. And this week will bring to us the kind of testimonies we are yet to have. Let the victims become victors. Let those who are losing now, let there be a change of stories. In the name of Jesus Christ. I declare now that the door is open. There is divine access to the word of the living God. I call every heart here fruitful. I call every heart good heart and good souls. And the word of God will be engrafted. And everyone will live by the same word. In the name of Jesus. You will prosper by the word in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Please help me welcome somebody close to you and tell them it's our time. The time is now. The time is now. God is about to do something. The power of God is coming into your life and new, right as I speak. Something beautiful is about to happen. Can you be excited and at least give somebody a smile? Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Please, can you have your seats? As I look at everybody, you look gorgeous, you look very radiant, you're looking like a man or like women that God has already blessed. You are looking like people whose cups are about to run over. And I'm so grateful to God that you are here today. Because whatever does not bow today, we bow. Power of God will bring complete perfection, restoration to every issue this morning. God has gone ahead of us already. And every crooked part in your lives will be made straight. You'll walk out of this place with signs and wonders following in Jesus' name. I have this confidence in God. And I know you will not otherwise be minded that anything that troubles you is in trouble this morning. Anything whatsoever troubles you, whatsoever maligns the will and the work of God in your life, that thing is in trouble as I speak. 
So whoever favors your righteous cause this morning, that thing is blessed. So, those who are wise will rather favor your righteous cause. The foolish ones will be the ones to be against you now because God is on your side. Amen. And if God be for us, who can be against us? It is going to be face to face with the power of God. Satan is in commotion today. The doors are opening unto you in pleasant places. And this week will be a week like never before. In the name of Jesus Christ. Well, that's a word of blessing for somebody before I bring the word. Amen. I feel the intensity of God's presence in the house. And wise people will not miss this kind of chance. There's so much grace in the house. These are such moments. That I've been desiring and it's now coming. Amen. Let, let's together open a scripture, just to one scripture, and we'll read it in about three translations before I can tell you what God has to say to you. John chapter 3, verse 31. John 3, 31. John 3, 31. I will read first of all in TPT translation. Then I will read in the message translation. Then I will read an amplified commentary. But pay attention. It's interesting. You will be happy you read it. Uh, starting with TPT. It says, For the one who is from the earth belongs to the earth and speaks from the natural realm. But the one who comes from above is above everything. <laughs> it's serious. Is above everything and speaks in the highest realm of all. Hallelujah. Now we talked about two people, two sets of people. One is from the earth. And they speak natural words. They speak ordinarily. They speak contemporary statements. But there is another set of people. They are from above. And they speak from the highest realm of all. So they speak from the superior point. So you determine which side are you? Now, the message says the one who comes from above is head and shoulders over other messengers from God. Head and shoulders above. Is that the earth bound is earth bound and speak earthly languages. He said, the heaven born is in the lake, a lake of his own. Meaning, has no equal. He's in his own world. Because he's from above. Same thing, but with clarity. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amplified comments to say, he who comes from above, heaven, is far above all others. He comes from the he who comes from the earth belongs to the earth and talks the language of earth. His words are from ethnic point standpoint. They talk from ethnic standpoint. He said, He who comes from heaven is far above all others far superior to all others in prominence and in excellence. I belong to the other side. I hail from above. And I don't belong to the earth. I don't speak like worldly people speak. I speak from another world. And I experience excellence and I experience prominence. That's my portion 
Is that your portion? Say, that's my portion. I speak and I experience prominence. I speak and I experience excellence. That's my place. Hallelujah. Father, once again, your word is pregnant. Please bring men into your word. Reveal your word by your power. Attest to the word that I speak with miracles, with signs, with immediate manifestation. Let it be known that it pleases you for the sake of your word. That it pleases you for the sake of yourself to make your word glorious and honorable. Honor this word in the life of your sons and daughters. Manifest yourself. In the few moments that I have to speak, let power be displayed in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You know, one of the ways Jesus prayed, he taught them to ask, let thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. He taught the disciples, let your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. So it means the intention of God originally is to make sure heaven dominates the earth. So we are God's representatives on earth and God prides himself in us. He wants us to so be in charge, to so dominate issues and circumstances of life that we will replicate what happens in heaven in our day, in our current earth. And when I say in the current earth, many you have an earth to yourself. So what is happening in heaven should happen exactly in my life. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That is God's ultimate best for us. So we live as though we are in heaven, yet we are here. Because we are out of this world. We are in the world, but we are not of the world. We live beyond the current status. Hallelujah. Amen. This is God's plan. This is God's plan so that we are not ravaged by what is ravaging everybody. We are not distressed by what is distressing a community. We are not overtaken by the vices in the city. We are the ones in charge and in control. God has set us as the light of the world. We are a city that is set upon the hill that cannot be hidden. He said, in John chapter 8, John chapter 8, the Bible says in verse 12 and 13, he said, I am the light of this world. Whoever follows me shall not walk in darkness. They shall have the light of life. In 1 John chapter 5, the scripture says to us, ah, this is the news, the good news that we heard from the beginning. He said that our God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. So if you do represent God, then you should live as light. There should be no darkness that can put you out. You are supposed to live from the vantage position, which is from above. From where? From above. Come on, people, are you here? You are living from where? From above. If you are living under, living on earth, it means you are distressed, like the world is distressed. It means you are losing, like the world is losing. It means you are victimized, like the world is victimized. But you can be in the midst of mess, and you have a message. You can be in the place where there is confusion and chaos, but your case is different. You can be an exception to the rules in life to say when others are going down, I am saying there is a need to know. God is able to make all grace abound towards you. So that when everybody is in scarcity, you are abounding in surplus and God is increasing you more and more. And so that what others don't see, you are having more than enough of it. Hallelujah. In this day and time when the world seems dark, it's like the world has returned to Genesis chapter 1 verses 3. Verse 3 down to 4. 
when God's creation enters into darkness and it looks like uh, 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 the, the darkness has cast shadows on the world we are living in now. You look here, you see darkness. You see the oppression of Satan. You look there, you see the works of the enemy. But God is calling out light out of those who are his. And you and I are the ones who are to protect the light of God. So that in the midst of darkness, the light becomes the best option. Hallelujah. You are so needed, even now. Hallelujah. You are needed. I am needed because the world is miserable without us. Praise the Lord. The light is always desirable. Light is life. That's why God, the same God who called out light out of darkness, is calling out now that the light of God will shine upon our heart to give the glory of God, to reveal the glory of God in our lives in the face of Christ. Hallelujah. That same God is crying out, let there be light in your situations in the name of Jesus Christ. So this morning, we are seeing from a topic I have titled, Life Beyond Reproach. Life Beyond what? Reproach. Life Beyond Reproach. And I want you to know that life without reproach is a life without shame. It's a life that is blameless life. You can live a life in this day and time that has no blame. It has no blemish. You can live a life that is faultless. You can live a life that is devoid of abuse. That what is abusing and molesting other people, you live the same life and you are radiant and you are glorious and the, the glory of God is saved upon your life. We can live beyond the control of the weather. We can live beyond the experiences that the government gave to us. We can live beyond stagnation, even in the time of scarcity. God is bringing you to this life, and that life is what I desire. That life is what you should desire. To live a life beyond reproach. Somebody help me shout it. Life without beyond reproach. Life beyond reproach is the gift of God for my life. Hallelujah. That your case will be different and you'll be an exception to every demonic rule. That the Lord Almighty, when he looks at his treasures, you will be one of them in the name of Jesus. Why are you going to live a life that is beyond reproach? It is because we have made our mind up. We have determined to pursue his word. We have determined to grow in God vigorously. And that's exactly the point we are looking at this morning. Growing in God so that we can live a life that is beyond reproach. Now let's start looking at the scriptures. Proverbs chapter 4, beginning from verse 20 to 22. This is very crucial. Say, my son, my son. He wasn't talking to a stranger. He was talking to somebody in a relationship. The father is talking to somebody he loves. The father is communing with somebody who belongs to him, my own person. Someone who came from my DNA, my son. There are certain rights that is reserved only for sons. Hallelujah. Strangers cannot have access. There are certain instructions of life that is not for the multitude. It is only for sons. Sons are the direct heir of fathers. They are the ones prepared in order to take over. Sons are valuable. Sons are pillars in the home. Sons of a family are the one to take over as the next generation. So a man 
who knows what tomorrow will be, is beginning to prepare his own son to take over. Say, my son, how many of you would like to take over in your communities, in your studies, in your own world, in the economy? You want to take over spiritually. You want to be the man in charge. You are the one God is talking to. He said, my son, observe, focus, contemplate, attend to my words. Contemplate, observe, focus, pay attention to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. He said, let them not depart out of your eyes. He said, keep them in the midst of your heart. Because they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. So, life and health hail from his word. Life and health your life, your health comes from his word. You want to be healed? You want to live in divine health? Life and health is in his word. So if you pay attention to God's word, you are paying attention to real life. The life from above. The superior life. The life that cannot be conquered. The life that is over and above. The life that is from another world, another realm. The superior realm of all. If you pay attention to the world. Now that world is the constitution of the believer. This world is the world that produces life in any occasion. This world has been tested. This word has been proven. This word is guaranteed. Oh, hallelujah. Is the biggest insurance ever. This word, medicine fails. I promise you, medical science, there are certain things that are beyond them. Amen. But the word is guaranteed forever. It will never fail. My son, attend to my word. Give attention. Pay focus. Be determined to incline your ears to what I have to say. It will give you life. It will give you health. We're speaking seriously with this authenticity. With this kind of tension. But there are those who will not attend. They will rather wait until the service is over. And come and disturb the peace of the minister to collect what is not available. Everything is available as I speak now. Amen. Attend to my word. The anointing is present. The grace of God is here. The power of God backs up his word. Remember I told you that every word of God is pure, tested, and it has been certified and guaranteed. It will never fail. It will never fail. Attend to my word. Pay attention. Be focused at my word. Incline your ears to my saying. Don't let it depart out of your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Hallelujah. Because it will bring life to those who find them. It will bring health to all their flesh. I want life. Superior life. The life that is above death. The life that cannot be put out by the network of Satan. I want the life that is superior to the natural life. I want the supernatural life. The life that is beyond sickness and disease. The life that is over and above. The natural life. That's what you need and that's what God is giving. Praise God. This life makes mockery of sickness and disease. Is the life of God himself. This life is in the Son. Hallelujah. 
whoever hath the Son hath life of oh, glory. I call that life into your existence in the name of Jesus. There are lots of moving cops all over the street. Dead men walking. They have religion, but they are dead. They call the name of Jesus, but there is no life. There are lots of cops moving around you in your neighborhood. There is no life. But I know those sitting right before me this morning, hearing this word of eternal life, the life of God is just coming into your situation. And that which had the life of God cannot be put out by the network of Satan. You cannot succumb to the pressure, to the tendencies of Satan. You are from above. You are above all things. No matter what is coming against you right now, you are superior to them. You have a life that can engage at every level. That life comes from God and God alone. And that life is what you receive this morning in the name of Jesus. There is a life that swallows death. There is a life that intimidates disease. He said, die. I said, I will not die. Psalm 118, verse 17. I shall not die, but needs to declare the works of God. That against every medical fact, every, every medical science, against everything that science knows, you are supposed to be dead. You were given just one year to live. You were given just six months to live. The disease and the sickness that has been diagnosed in you cannot allow you to live beyond three months. But this life that I talk about, that has swallowed death and victory, that life causes you to live a year more, two years more, three years, four years, and you kept on living. And the doctors are confused. That is the life that is above death. The life that is above corruption. The life that is above molestation. The Satan himself is disappointed because every of his weapons fail. All his weapons fail. Praise the Lord. That's the love I want. This is the life that I want. Hallelujah. They are life to those who find them. And he gave you the secret. He said, this world produces life. Whoever finds this world, finds life. If you can find this world, you find life. And now you have in the world, I have life from the word of God. Since God's word is guaranteed, since God's word can never fail, since God's word has been proven, he's been justified. The word says in Proverbs chapter 30, verse 5, is that every word of God is pure and it's just shield unto them, all them that put their trust in it. He's guaranteed. Oh, I have guaranteed to live until I fulfill my calling. I will not be short charged. I will not be cut off before my time. I refuse to submit to premature death in the name of Jesus Christ. Abundant life is mine. Hallelujah. Please have your seat. Let's go into a few more scriptures. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6. He said, Who also hath made us able ministers. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. We are able ministers. Talk to yourself, I am a minister. I am a minister. You see, that's what God said in Revelation chapter 3, I think chapter 5, verse 10, there about. He said, he has made us to his God to become priests and kings and we shall reign on earth. Our reigning point is not in heaven, it's on earth. He made us who? Priests and kings so that we can reign. We are priests and we are kings for the purpose of reigning on earth. So we are not supposed to be the one ruled over. We are the one in dominance. 
We are in dominion. Come on, tell yourself, I am in dominion. I am from above. That, that, that makes me a man in charge. Hallelujah. Because you are from above, it makes you to become the man in charge in every issue of life. I am in charge. In Psalm 91, he tells us that until you are satisfied with life, you're going nowhere. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I think verse 14 to 15, until you are satisfied, I will show you. You, you will see things that will make you behave crazy today. If God allows. Because the world we are living in is upside down. It's upside down. We are the only one that is living truly upright. Because we belong to God. The world itself is upside down. That's why things are done in opposite directions. People behave in opposite directions. You are the only sane person on earth. The saints are the only one representing God in this planet. That's why we can boldly say, let thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. We will do other things in the name of Jesus Christ. Your purpose and your God's intention for your life is that when you get to a place, you rearrange. You restructure. You reposition. And you make things to line up with God's will. Are you hearing me? I will not fail God. So in this Corinthian, he said, he made us able ministers. He didn't say defected leaders. Able minister. I am able. The capacity and capability God has given to me. I am an able minister. Come and talk to yourself. I am an able minister. But of the spirit, not of letters. I'm not religious. <laughs> I have the life of God. You see the difference? I am not religious. I have the life of God. Some people don't know the difference between just being a religious person and a man that has the life of God. If you do have the life of God, it means you hail from another world. It means your tenets, your constitution is from beyond the world. It is from above and it's super, it can be super imposed on the natural laws. The natural laws is subject to you. You are over and above. What happens and destroys others, if it comes by you, it will submit to you. What oppresses others, when it comes to you, it will bow to you. That's the world we are living in. Hallelujah. He made out able ministers of the new covenant, not of the letters, because the letter kill it, but the spirit gives life. Ooh. I see the life of God flowing in the audience. He's flowing from the spirit of life itself. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 10 verse 27. This is what is already happening here. Something's already happening. Isaiah chapter 10 verse 27. He says, And it shall come to pass today that the burden shall be taken away. Taken away. Help me say taken away. The burden, the burden of depression, the burden of sickness, the burden of disease, the burden of disaster, the burden of lack, the burden of poverty, the burden, burden of being a victim shall be taken away from all their shoulders and the yoke from all their legs and the yoke shall be destroyed. Today is that day when yokes are getting destroyed. Today is that day when yokes are getting destroyed. I said, today is that day when the yokes of the enemy in your life is getting destroyed. In the name of Jesus Christ. TPT says the same scripture this way. He said, in that day, the Lord will remove. Ah, yeah, yeah. God is removing. Removing everything that is contrary to his way. God is removing, taking it out of the way. He's removing it. If you don't want it removed, stay with it. It means you like it. But God, he said, the Lord will remove the heavy burdens 
from your shoulders. He will break off the yoke of bondage from your necks because of the heavy anointing that is upon you. There's a, how many of you sense the anointing that is upon your heart? And so it becomes impossible. It is not right. It is not permitted. It is not allowed that you walk out of the church with the same yoke you came with. Because there's an anointing sufficient to deal with the yoke and to destroy the burdens. In the name of Jesus. Call the sickness anything. In the book of the scientists, the scientists, call the sickness any name. You are not allowed to walk out with that same disease or sickness because there is an anointing that can take care of you today. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Genesis 27 40, Genesis 27 40, it said, You will live by your sword. You see how important it is for you to have a voice. The word is a sword. The scripture tells us that the word of God is a two-edged sword. So you will live by your own sword. If you have no sword, Jesus says, sell your throat and buy one. So no believer is allowed to be without a sword. The sword, not natural knife, but a spiritual sword. So that you can cut asunder, you can divide, and other things. Your son is the word of God that has been placed in your hands. So you put your mouth on the word of God, you are busy with the double-edged sword. You can do damage to the kingdom of darkness at any time. He so said, you shall live by your son. I won't read the next sentence because you will no longer serve any other person. Yeah. But Jehovah. Yeah. But he said, when you have dominion, then you will break the yoke from your neck. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. In that Isaiah chapter 10, verse 27, one other translation renders it this way. He said, I think amplified commentary. He said, it shall be that the when the burden shall be lifted from your shoulders. And the yoke from off your neck. Is that because you have grown fat? Fat. So that what was okay before cannot be okay anymore. You outgrew it. Some chains that the enemy put all around your life can no longer hang. They snapped. Oh, somebody said it snapped. As the word was coming, the chain broke on his own accord. Oh, the prison gates opened on his own accord. Oh, I thought that are people in the spirit. Whatever kept us down in the same spot. That's the experience, that's the explanation that you outgrew certain things. So as you begin to grow in God's word, you are growing in power. As you begin to grow, coming to feed in God's word, you are growing in grace. As you begin to hear God's word, because the scripture says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. As you begin to hear the word of faith, you are growing, you are growing. On man to you, some chains are breaking. They are breaking. They are breaking right now. You can no longer be contained. Hallelujah. You can't be contained. You don't even have to pray about them. They just snap. Some demons can no longer hang around you because you have grown fat. They just flee. In the name of Jesus Christ. It is a sign that power is coming upon your life. And that is the moment when you can say, I really am in dominion. I am in dominion. Oh, somebody say, I am in dominion. That's where God wants you to be. He wants you and I to be in dominion. Not dominated by anything. But dominating everything, everywhere. Dominating everything, everywhere. 
Oh God with us. Who can be against us? You are in dominion. Tell yourself, I am in dominion. I have power over the principalities. I have power over the witches and the wizards. I am anointed to deal with them all. Hallelujah. So when you have dominion, you will break his yoke from your neck. Who will break? You know, he said God will break. Who will break? When you have dominion, you break the yoke. Hallelujah. You, I can no longer stay under this burden. It's too heavy. I can't bear it. It is not, it's not in line with the call of God upon my life. It's not according to the program of God for my family. No, I say no to it. I say no to every wicked yoke. I say no to every demonic operation. I say no to every sorcery. I say no to every complication. I say no to all the works of Satan. In the name of Jesus, I take my place in the realm of the spirit. I proclaim I am in dominion. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. In Acts chapter 19 verse 20, God gave us an expression. Acts 19.20 uh, and I made two translations. He said <laughs> the effect of a man who is growing in the word of God. The effect of the word of God in your life. He said so mightily grew. So somebody is growing vigorously as you are being fed with the word of faith. As you are being fed with the word of God. You are growing high vigorously. And the effect of the word will be saved in your finances. The effect of the word will be saved in your spiritual life. The effect of the word will be saved in your social life. Hallelujah. Going to bed to sleep, wanting rest, only to be tormented from morning from night to morning. You went to sleep so that you can be strong when you wake up, but you are waking up more tired than you went to sleep. It means there is something happening while you are sleeping. Jesus says, why men slept? The evil one came and did what? Planted tears among the good and went away. Hallelujah. Enough is enough. My bed is for rest. <laughs> it's not for torment. Hallelujah. Do you hear what I just said? The Bible says God gives the ones in love sleep. Some of us will struggle to find sleep. And you are there. And everything is going wrong with you. Hour to hour you are tossing and toiling. Tossing forth and back. All over the bed. There is no rest for your soul. God says enough is enough. If you hear what I'm preaching to you this morning. You know you have a superior life. You are empowered to have dominion over that torment. And today you rise above that molestation in the name of Jesus Christ. John chapter 5 verse 38. John 5 38. And the word says, and ye have not his word abiding in you. Jesus told them. The reason why your life is like this, the reason why you are the way you are, is because my word does not abide in you. Remember where we started from. He said, attend to my word. Meditate, ponder, focus. Tune your ears to my word. Because there is life, there is health in the world. So he said, your word, my word is not abiding in you. If you still have complication in your life after this meeting, it means the word of God does not abide in you. There are other things occupying you. So you have another owner. But if you abide in God and his word abides in you, there is nothing that can dominate your life anymore. Are you hearing me? Nothing, can, nothing is permitted to dominate your life anymore. Colossians chapter 3 verse 16. Colossians 
chapter 3, verse 16. And the word says, let, permit, allow the word of Christ to dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Who is going to let that happen? Who is going to make this kind of a thing happen? The Holy Spirit? Your sister, your mother, your father? You yourself allow, permit the word of Christ to dwell in you richly. Some of us, we can quote, we have all the other people's numbers, all the business strategies in our head, but there is no word in our spirit. No word. If you are empty of word, you are empty of life. Wow. Let me tell you something that is a secret. And you have to know from today, every word there ever is in life is a word of words. Is a word of what? Words. And if you don't have a word for your situation, the situation will dominate you. And remember, you cannot solve a problem from the same level the problem is created. You have to take a step higher than where the problem was created so that you can have the lasting solution. You have to be from above to be above. Did you hear what I said? You really, really have to be from above to really stay above. So you need a superior word, an eternal word, a word anointed, and you put it in your mouth, and you can now come against every other word. You can paralyze all that Satan has said concerning you medically, concerning you spiritually, concerning you in your marriage, concerning you your status. You can only turn them around by a superior word. Have you not heard Isaiah 54, verse 17? Since no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And he went for them to tell you how to deal with that. He said, every tongue that rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. Not your mother condemn for you. You shall condemn. Now listen to this. Listen to this. If somebody understands or the scripture shows us that words are weapons, then you should understand that God's word is even a superior weapon. If words are the weapons that the enemy uses against us, if words are the weapon that witches and wizards are using against us, you should know I have something better. Hallelujah. I have something that dominates a lesser word. I have the original word. I have a word that has been proven. I have a word that has been guaranteed. I have a word that God says yes to. I have a word that can knock off any other negative word. I have the true word, the living word. The word I have is the word of dominion. Hallelujah. Enough is enough. You have given your voice to the enemy for too long. It is time to retrieve our mandate. Bring out your weapon. How many of you have weapons today? My weapon is beyond the gun. It is my own, my own bullet is in my words. And it is an authentic weapon. What the enemy uses against us is a rubber bullet. I have the real bullet. Hallelujah. And that bullet is the word of God. I put the word of faith in my mouth and I begin to address. I begin to address every condition. I begin to confront every confrontation. I begin to challenge every challenge. I begin to attack every devil in the name of Jesus Christ. And because I am from above, I will always come right on top. Somebody hearing me this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let the work of, word of Christ dwell in you richly. You should not be looking for bullets and looking for weapon to any kind of invasion or attack. You should have a ready-made automated rifle. Kayoba Sataya. There should be a rifle right at your disposal at every given point. If you say you shall die tomorrow, I say, no, 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 I shall live, but not die. You 
You want to look at for something to say I'm beginning to cry and shed tears. I said, what is happening to you? Somebody said I will die. No, 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 no. So if you don't retract, if you do not take your word back, I will return it to you. You are sending a messenger of death. You have it. Are you hearing me? We didn't do anything, but we just said that to send that. That's what it is. Whoever. Let's go for that quickly. Hallelujah. How can I create my own realities? I want to leave you with this. And I will close the service. How do I create my own realities in this fallen world? How do I create my Romans chapter 10, verse 18? You apply yourself to the word of faith, and this is what will begin to happen. He said, But what does he say? The word is nigh thee, even in your mouth and in your heart. The word of faith which we preach. You have the word in your mouth. God has given you the constitution of heaven. Don't be lazy. Turn the word into your spirit. So that at every point in time you speak the words of faith. In any situation, in any condition, nothing can defile the word. Nothing has power enough to defile the word. Have the word of faith in your mouth concerning every issue that confronts you. Are you hearing me? Don't wait for the enemy to have the final say in that issue in your life. Don't let your adversary say the last word. You have the final word in your spirit. And every time you speak, don't speak from your head. Hallelujah. Speak from your spirit. Because those who speak from the head, they are earthly. Those who speak from their spirit, they are from our mouth. When you speak from your spirit, you are digging deep because the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. You are speaking from heaven. If you speak from your spirit, or if you speak what you think, you speak what you heard, you speak what you perceive, you speak the report that the doctor gave, you are speaking as a natural man. And you are speaking words of death. You are speaking words of disaster. You are speaking words that cannot make any, any, any blessing to your life. But if you search and reach down into your spirit mind and remember all that God has said about you, and you draw out a word in the spirit, and you launch it against the attack of Satan, you have spoken from heaven. It is considered God has spoken. Oh, hallelujah. God himself has spoken. And nobody speaks after God speaks. Hallelujah. Lamentation 3, 36, 37 says, Who is he that speaks? To subvert a man in his cause, God will speak approve. To turn aside the right of a man before the face of the Most High. Who is he that says, and it comes to pass, when God commanded it not. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a failed world. But you have a winning world. A superior word to replace and to break down the negative word. Hallelujah. Don't let the enemy over speak, speak over you. You've got to speak the final word. In every situation, speak it, believe it, and stand by it. Let me give you three scriptures. And then we'll be looking at the rest, possibly if God allows another time. Now, when you look at the book of Matthew, chapter 8, verse 8, there was a situation that occurred. And the man showed God that there can be supernatural in the natural. A man by the name Centurion, he had a daughter or a servant that was sick and afflicted. And he came to Jesus that Jesus might heal the servant. And uh, Jesus said, no, 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 I'm coming with you to your house. He said, no, 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 you don't have to come to my house. I am a man under authority. I understand how these things work. It just, just say a word. Say a word. Oh, I think God is talking to somebody here. Say a word. And he mentioned the He said, and my servant shall be healed. Say a word. What will you say when the enemy comes with questions about your life and your destiny? To you, what do you say? You sit down and cry. 
You said that I'm looking for somebody to pity party you. You let somebody come and then cry by you and then he just goes into me. No, 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 no. You said what you wanted to say, but I have something better. And whose report will you believe? What God said about you or what somebody else said about you? Oh no. And God says you are blessed. God says you are fruitful. God says you are healed. God says you are prosperous. Hallelujah. In all this, Jesus said, I've never seen such a faith in this world. And the Bible says, and the translator said, Victim Fatum. Meaning, not sooner said and it was done. Meaning, as he was saying it, it was perfected. As he was uttering those words, his desires were perfected. As you begin to declare the counsel of God over every issue, every matter, every circumstance, remember, as soon as you are saying them, you will have them. I need time people to receive this. As soon as you are declaring them, you will have them in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. I'll keep the other two for you. It looks like they're chasing me out of this place. Let's give God a praise. Hallelujah. Let's give God a praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Have you received your miracle? I said, did you receive your miracle today? Oh, come on, give God a shout. Hallelujah. 